Can I have your number? Can I invite you to my house? When I come back, can you come and visit me? We'll cook. And I was like, oh, oh my goodness, this is, you know, it, yeah. it's such a kindness for kindness for kindness for kindness. Meet Agata, who moved from Poland to Malaysia seven years ago. She shared the most confusing Malay words for foreigners, the issues with women's safety in Kuala Lumpur, and the best places to live in Malaysia. I'm Max, an entrepreneur and YouTuber who lives just uh, nearby, in Singapore. Let's go. One of the first sentences that I've learned was Saye Kanyang, which means I'm full uh. because, you know, there was so much food that is just wooden feet. And because Malaysians are so um, hospitable and so, you know, uh, they express love with the food, right? Mm. They would be have some more, have some more. And yeah, I would be on that, you know, unconscious journey of just packing, packing, packing until there was just literally no space. I yeah. remember one of the first thing I was like, how do I say so you need, I'm full? You need to know how to reply to this. <laughs> yeah. And how to Cannot like literally uh, yeah, uh, know where to where to stop when to stop but this makan ready not already but makan ready makan ready mm. it's like very common in, oh, Sing in singapore as well yeah. oh yeah yeah pe pe people say yeah when they see you especially like uh, uncles or uncles or aunties, mm. they say oh, makan already meaning like how are you how yeah. Are you doing? yeah 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 that's a very uh, interesting thing uh which, I mean, if you're in the region, specifically Malaysia, but what you say, it's Singapore as well. I think, yeah, that's literally a synonym for like, how are you? Or like, I'm yeah. checking on you. It's kind of a hi. Can yeah. you imagine in your country that someone is asking you as the first thing, like, have you eaten? Have you eaten? Uh, it would be like why? confused, like, yeah. why are you asking <laughs> me that? Yes, why? <laughs> but I think it's beautiful, right? Because, I mean, we all know that food is way more than just eating, right? And it's way more than food, right? It is love, it is uh, the caring about someone, it's expressing that. So it's actually a super beautiful uh, thing, right? To, to ask, like literally you can be more direct to expressing that you care about that person, right? Mm. How's your bahasa? Like, what, what's, what's uh, the matter? I'm going to go to Sekarang. But I'm going to go to Sekarang. <laughs> Still learning. In uh, Malay, actually, uh, which is quite funny, there are a few words which might be the same in Russian, uh, which were super confusing. In Russian, yes means da, right? Da, yeah. But in Polish, it's tak. Tak, tak, but tak. But tak, tak yeah. is no in Malay. Oh, so it's, it's exactly, confusing. I mean, the full word is tidak, but everyone uses it as a short form, it's tak. Uh -huh. So you see tak, and your brain just goes, it's a yes. Because yeah. it's literally reverse, right? Like uh, literally the literally, opposite. Yeah. And literally how they spell it, it's T-A-K. It's exactly how we spell uh, uh, in Polish for yes. And then there was another one. I like uh, in Malay, it's saye suka. Saye suka makan would be yeah. I like to eat. And suka doesn't suka. mean anything Bitch. in Russian. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a bad word, right? It's an insult uh, word. So um, I remember when I started learning, it was quite tough for me to just like, so it just didn't want to go through the throat. <laughs> 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 it just felt always like so weird because I knew already saye, it's a new mm. word. So I knew it means I like I. Yeah. And then when I start, had to say the sukkah, I was like, ah! Do you actually know like swear words in Bahasa? I actually don't. Oh. And I think, um, I think I asked that before. So I don't know if I'm just such an uh, elegant person that just doesn't <laughs> <You> speak. <are>. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> or um, it's just not very clear because oh. it never, I was never getting like a very straight answer or it just never uh, stuck in my brain. Mm. So I think there are some uh, taken from the Chinese language, but because it's also not very familiar for me, I can't really remember what uh. it is. And I've never really heard people saying it. Oh, people so, don't say. I mean, at least it, it, I'm not fluent in Malay, so I don't have, yeah. you know, those conversations to catch it. And maybe, you know, because it didn't uh, get stuck in my brain, I don't catch it. But yeah, overall, that's always a funny conversation between foreigners, right? When mm. uh, the, uh, international people meet, usually what I observe, it's like, oh, how do you swear? What is the common word? Yeah. But when I ask that in, uh, in Malaysia, it, actually, it's not uh, never like a very straight answer that it's given to me. So... It's just adds the story, you know, adds up as a story. This is just yeah. politeness here that maybe yeah. it's not, um, yeah, like common to also share it. Mm. There are better words to learn. <laughs> <laughs> How people speak, like they speak fast or slow or like average? Because in Singapore, it tends to be like with English. Mm. People 
first the Singaporeans they um, simplify words, mm. especially speaking to each other, like make it really concise and like not using all the grammar yep. sentences, but just using couples like yep. few words of it and like, like a speaking, strict language, like right? Like strict language and speaking fast. Mm. So like I think for many foreigners, when you come first time, like you kind of oh it's English or oh, no. Now I, I'm okay, but like, how, how is it in, uh, it in Malaysia? English, I think it's, yeah, the, the accent is very clear. I don't think I have problem with understanding it. Um, in Malay, because I still don't fully, you know, uh, know all the words, obviously it does sound uh, sometimes uh, yeah, difficult to understand. So it's hard for me to evaluate the pace. Mm. I don't think it's like uh, some other languages like French, for example, when it sounds like a song, right? Like mm. all the words connected. So I don't think it's uh, uh, like that here. I think you can still catch the phrases and the words. But I think the funny thing is the writing, because mm. also like on my TikTok, I get a lot of comments in Malay as well. And that's a challenging part because the words are shortened. Mm. So, you know, they use the words that they would use with friends, right? Which probably you have that in your language as well. You know, you sometimes shorten, you, you eat few letters or you combine yeah. them. But I think here it's very common. And imagine like there's no way to translate it, right? You can't just copy it and put it in the translator because those words are not recognizable in the, you know, vocabulary official dictionary, mm. right? So then sometimes I sweat, sometimes I have to ask someone to translate it for me because it's a lot of like three letters. There's three letter word, three letter word, four letter word, three letter word. And I know sometimes you will already learn, so you will know uh, what it means. Mm. But some, if it's a new word, like you can't decode it basically. Yeah. After our previous interview, like what, what changed in your life? Okay. Oh. <laughs> like, okay. You people... give yourself a lot of credit. <laughs> so people recognize you? Yeah, it did happen. I had like really cute situations because of that. My dentist who is like uh, considered one of the best dentists uh, in the country, he would also uh, recognize me and then they would make, uh, you know, very kind atmosphere when I enter for my visit and all, you know, the, the whole team was basically uh, joking and poking me for, you know, being famous now uh -huh. after that video. Did you ask them if they subscribe to this channel? If you want, I can always add that question. <laughs> Guys, if you're not subscribed, like, you, you know what to do now. You know what to do. Did you subscribe yet? <laughs> <laughs> How would you rank your feelings of being safe as a girl in Malaysia? Okay, not to jinx anything. Give me some wood. Need uh, to knock it. <laughs> okay, let's let's try to find, find some wood. <laughs> Here, and we have to do it underneath. <laughs> Damn, this is a very uh, Polish way. Uh, yeah, touch of, wood. Yeah, touch wood. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, very safe to be very honest. Mm. Uh, and I think um, I would just uh, put that question into two parts. Uh, so the safety. I don't feel threatened. I don't feel particularly in danger. And obviously, it happens that I come back fr somewhere from somewhere at night. I don't sleep in taxis anymore, <laughs> <laughs> especially not at night. But yeah, I never feel you know that I uh, I need to be worried. Yeah. You still need to be mindful of your surroundings and what's, go what's going on, but I don't feel uh, threatened. And then when it comes to women, I think um, this place is actually very safe uh, for women, but I also think it's a very respectful for women place. You know, they would protect me from going alone and send someone to uh, uh, drive me on the motorbike yeah. uh, home. Uh, and I think overall, never had any situation like even, you know, uh, I can't remember what is the word, but even a man, I don't know, uh, doing a sound on the street. It happened to me in other countries, but not in Malaysia. Like, so, like whistling or something? Or, yeah, or like, like commenting? Th there, is, there is that word, I can't remember uh, what is it. You know, doing like the sound effect for a, a woman passing, right? Yeah, like yeah. to get her attention. Yeah. I literally never heard it. So maybe it's just uh, not too, too interesting, but uh, thank you for, uh, for you know, not uh, um, getting that wrong attention. Uh, but yeah, it never, never happened to me. I never feel like uh, unsafe or uh, abused even in, you know, um, I think everyone is very discreet and very respectful. So from that woman perspective, as a stereotype, right? You would feel that maybe the man would stare or maybe the man would, I don't know, approach, right? And then again, country agnostic, right? It's just a, a global stereotype that some men could do that. And I've never experienced that here. Mm. So, you know, it's, um, I'm very grateful for that because it does provide that safe uh, 
environment and you just feel yeah more more protected what are the like stories that are showing like people's kindness here in malaysia oh those i have plenty i mean honestly um they are not as shocking anymore because mm. yeah uh, to, i don't yeah. take it for granted and yeah. i still appreciate the same level when i see it and i usually call my parents and uh, tell about those stories every time they happen even after those eight years because that fills your heart with like such a love and appreciation yeah, i didn't have a map and i had to go somewhere and obviously i chose walking <laughs> so uh but I got, I got lost and there was like a crossing, uh, one on the main, you know, uh, busy crossings. And I was sure that I should go, let's say, straight, right, yeah. this direction. And there was a lady waiting for the uh, green light. And I asked her, oh, do you know I need to uh, go there? Do you know which direction do I go? And she was like, mm, yeah, but it's, uh, it's like left and right. Okay, come, I will, uh, I will show you. And I was like... Uh, but you say it's not there, right? And she was facing already and waiting for the green light to s go yeah. straight into one direction. And she was like, yeah, it's fine. It's too, uh, you know, it might be too complicated to, to explain. And she was walking with me for five minutes to basically go to the point when it's already uh, straightforward to get there. And I was like, this is actually inconvenience for someone, right? Like, I don't think usually people are just so bored and especially that walking, it's not such a big, you know, part of the lifestyle that, yeah, let's just walk and, uh, yeah. you know, uh, walk there. But still, like that mindful choice, I will help you and that's more important, jump and we go, right? Also, I think I was taking a bus somewhere uh, also uh, uh, at the beginning and I didn't, like, I didn't have a cash. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't have cash, I only had uh, my card. And then a bus is coming and I started panicking. I was like, how do I buy the ticket? And then like they saw me panic, they just come with the money uh, and they just giving it to me. And I was like, oh, but I don't have it, so I can't give it to you. And I was like, it's okay, <laughs> it's okay. But still, obviously it wasn't like a, uh, it wasn't a ticket. Uh, uh, I mean, it was fearing a ticket, but just the immediate thought that someone yeah. comes to you and mm -hmm. just give you that money. But then on the other side, they are giving, but they are still so cute and kind when, uh, when it comes to receiving. It's not like we are giving and we expect the same. So I also had a reverse situation not long ago um, at the airport that someone didn't have, the, the card wasn't working. So I gave that uh, the same similar small symbolic amount, right? Right? Mm. Uh, of money which I had on me and that person was feeling so uncomfortable with it uh, local uh, local Malaysian uh, she was like oh, no I can't do it and I was like don't worry like uh, you would do the same don't worry about it uh, immediately like can I have your number can I invite you to my house when I come back can you come and visit me we'll cook and I was like oh, oh my goodness this is you know it, yeah. it's such a Kindness for kindness for kindness yeah. for kindness. I don't know, even when uh, viewing the apartment uh, and then the agent would like, uh, okay, where do I drop you? And I was like, I don't know where it's convenient for you. And he was like, no, tell me where you live, I drop you. And I was like, well, what direction are you going? Don't worry about it, just tell me I drop you. Mm. And I was like, okay. That's just a lot of those super nice and kind and kind of, you could think inconvenient for those people, right? It's not just kindness in words. Yeah. It like literally people put effort yeah. to like welcome you, to, uh, to make sure that you are safe, to help you out. I think it's that genuine helping and welcoming. If not KL, where would you live in Malaysia? If you cannot live in KL, it's banned. For some reason, so where would oh, you, I don't like the thought where, of it even. Where would you go? Where, where would you live? I like the big cities. I mean, I love uh, the Malaysia has so stunning places like island side and the uh, nature and the jungle. But maybe at this stage in my life, I just don't see myself uh, take like removing myself from the chaos and traffic and buildings and you know the places. So I think that narrows it down to probably Penang, which, yeah, my criteria would be, it needs to be like happening, it needs to be vivid. And maybe even the first one, food, I think you can find across the whole Malaysia fantastic food, but obviously Penang, it's known for, uh, you know, the, the paradise uh, for foodies as well. Um, so I think with those criteria would be Penang, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're really ambassador of Malaysia <laughs> and you like country so much. Feels like you found this, so you discovered a country that really fits you. Yeah. So you Polish, you were born in Poland. You have like identity of, of Polish, but then you kind of discovered this beautiful country 
in the another part of the world and it kind of fits you a lot. Yeah. And I think it was also quite instant because I lived in uh, some other countries before as well, also in Asia. And I don't think it was ever that instant fit. I think you, you explained it uh, uh, pretty accurately. It just felt this this might be it, this is the place. I think it's that uh, lifestyle. It, it teaches you about a different approach to life and the stressing about those things, right? Like something it's delayed uh, by few minutes, few hours. So yeah, true, you could have been very irritated and you could have been, uh, you know, stressing up about it. But will you remember about it in five days? Probably mm. not, right? Mm. But the stress you caused to your body was already, you know, having some uh, effect, right? And probably ruin your day. So what is the point? You just learn how to be happy. So if you found a place that taught you how to be happy and you are happy, <laughs> then obviously it ticks all the boxes. So I would never say, you know, any place is perfect, right? There are always pros and cons. There are always things that could have been better, mm. but it's just the point of the balance and the place that, yeah, make you feel like, is that really a problem? Or yeah. like, is that really even worth, you know, spending time discussing? Like nothing will be ever perfect. That's the point, right? Yeah. But it's just, I think that training your mind on how to treat those things, uh, which in Malaysia, I think if you immerse yourself in the culture, is just that unconscious training mm. to become just more loving and more kind and more optimistic, more positive, and just more, um, appreciative of things. So then you just naturally change or not to pick on things yeah. unnecessarily. Yeah. You're such a kind and enjoyable person. Thanks so much for deciding to watch more videos on my channel. I like you a lot. Yes, you. See you there. Click on it.